Hey guys, my name is Dini and welcome back to my channel. So do you want to learn my exact Forex trading strategy for 2023? Well, in this video, I'll be teaching you all about it. I'll be teaching you about my strategy called the 20% strategy and I'll be teaching you all about the rules. So if you're interested in learning about my strategy, stick around for this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and without any further ado, let's get into it. Introduction to the 20% strategy. What is the 20% strategy? The 20% strategy is a strategy I created that changed my life. I found this strategy after deciding to spend hours on the chart looking for patterns that appeared often. When it first came out, it was called the 50% strategy. The 20% strategy in simple terms is setting your trade target to 20% of a valid candlestick. So that's the definition. The 20% strategy rules. Rule number one, the time frame. The 20% strategy only works on the one minute time frame, so make sure to use that time frame. We spot setups and base most of our rules around the one minute time frame. Rule number two, valid candlestick. The 20% strategy first begins with finding a large candlestick. What do I mean by a large candlestick? A candlestick body must be a minimum of five pips in order to be considered a large candlestick. So what I mean is the body must be five pips. Otherwise, if it's 4.9, 4.8, then no, it's not a valid candlestick. Now you're going to hear me say large candlestick many times when explaining the 20% strategy. Now, just for clarification, the large candlestick, what I mean by the large candlestick is the candlestick that is a minimum of five pips. That's what we consider the large valid candlestick. So if you hear me, you know, mentioning a large candlestick, it's the first candlestick in our system that has a minimum of five pips. The body is a minimum of five pips. So it's the first candle that we consider the large candlestick. So yeah, that's what I mean by a large candlestick. All right, so I have an offer for you. I've partnered up with Hero Effects and Hero Effects is the broker that I recommend. They are offering a 50% deposit bonus. That means if you deposit $10,000, for example, you can trade with $15,000. Whatever you deposit, they will put 50% on top. And not only that, if you deposit with Hero Effects using the link below, I'm also going to give you free lifetime access to my entire Forex Mastery course. So links will be down below. Once you sign up and deposit, message me on Instagram, Telegram, or email, and my team will give you free lifetime access to my course. Rule number three, the opening of the second candle. In order to have a valid setup, the second candle after the large candlestick must open above or below the large candlestick. So if the large candlestick is bullish, the second candlestick must open above the large candlestick. If the large candlestick is bearish, the second candlestick must open below the large candlestick. So we have an example, as you can see on the right side, we have a bullish setup. We have a large candlestick, which is labeled as five pips, and we have the second candlestick right above. And as you can see, the second candlestick has opened above, right? It's not touching the large candlestick, it's opened above. Now we have a bearish example. So we have the five pip large candlestick and the second candlestick that follows has opened below. So make sure your second candlestick opens above if it's bullish or below if it's bearish. So if the large candlestick is a bullish candlestick, then the second candlestick must open above. If the large candlestick is a bearish candlestick, the second candlestick must open 
below. Rule number four, second candlestick should be smaller. The second candlestick after the large candlestick must be smaller than the large candlestick in size. The large candlestick should always be bigger than the second candlestick, otherwise the setup will be invalid. For example, if the large candlestick is five pips and the second candlestick is 10 pips, the setup will be invalid. So always check the size of the second candlestick. Now, as you can see on the example on the right, the first large candlestick, which is five pips, is small and the second candlestick that opened below, right? So it opened below and that's valid, but the problem is it's bigger than the first candlestick. And if it's bigger, then it's invalid regardless of whether it opened above or below, right? So in this case, the second candlestick opened below, but it was bigger than the first candlestick. Rule number five, plot your 20% take profit zone. The reason why I named it the 20% strategy is because our take profit level is always 20% of a large valid candlestick. So you need to identify roughly where your 20% will be. If you have a bullish large candlestick, then the 20% take profit zone will be near the top of the candlestick. If you have a bearish large candlestick, then the 20% take profit zone will be near the bottom of the candlestick. This allows you to know exactly where you will exit a trade before you have even taken it. So as you can see on the examples on the right side, let's start with the bullish candle. The blue bullish candle, which is five pips, right? The take profit for that is at the top of the candle. Why? Because it's a bullish candlestick, right? If you have a bullish large candlestick, the 20% take profit line should always be placed at the top side of the candlestick. The reason why is because when you have a bullish candlestick, then that means your trade is a sell trade, right? And if you're selling, then the top half of the bullish candlestick will be your take profit after, you know, your trade has met, you know, the entry rules. Now with the bearish candlestick, it's the opposite. So the 20% take profit line should be placed near the bottom of the candlestick. Why? Because it's a buy trade, right? If you have a bearish candlestick, you're expecting price to go down further and then you'll buy and that buy trade will have the bottom of that bearish candlestick as the take profit zone. Don't be afraid because I will explain this on the charts, you know, to make it easier to understand. Rule number six, the minimum profit target should be 100 pips. The minimum profit target for the 20% strategy is 100 pips. That means the distance from the 20% take profit zone to your entry must be 100 pips before you can decide it's a valid setup. If a trade setup only gives you 60 pips, then that is not valid. You must wait for the price to meet your minimum 100 pips rule. This protects you from entering setups early and also gives you much less of a drawdown. So as you can see on the example on the right, we have a large candlestick which is labeled as five pips. So price, we are expecting price to go down and it goes down. When it goes down, it hits our 100 pip, you know, minimum mark, which you can set on the charts, right? And then we can place a trade because the rules have been met for a minimum of 100 pips. Now there's more to it than just 100 pips. So you should have 100 pips as your minimum take profit. That means for every trade you take using the 20% strategy, you will make a minimum or you will aim for a minimum of 100 pips. Rule number seven, make sure the RSI is oversold or overbought. The RSI indicator stands for relative strength index and its job is to tell you the strength or weakness of a currency pair. You cannot enter a trade using the 20% strategy until the RSI is overbought or oversold. What do I mean by overbought and oversold? Well, overbought means the currency has gained so much strength and is being bought by a lot of people, which is why the currency pair is going up. Oversold means the currency pair is becoming weak and it's being sold by people, which is why the currency pair is going down. Now, here's the important part. The RSI indicator must be 70 or above or 30 or below for your setup to be valid. 
If you have found a sell setup using the 20% strategy, then the RSI must be 70 or above. If you have found a buy setup using the 20% strategy, then the RSI must be 30 or below. Now, as you can see on the right side, we have the RSI. So there are two numbers you need to focus on, 30 and 70. If price goes below 30, it's oversold. People are selling. If price goes above 70, it's overbought, people are buying. In order to have a valid setup, the RSI needs to go 30 or below or 70 or above. Otherwise, your trade will be invalid. Regardless of if everything is aligned, you know, you have all the rules, but the RSI is not meeting the rules, then your setup is invalid. So please make sure the RSI is 70 or above or 30 or below. So yeah, I will be explaining how to apply all of this knowledge on the charts. Don't worry, you will understand more. Valid slash invalid candlesticks. What are valid slash invalid candlesticks? The first two candlesticks are very important when using the 20% strategy. The large candlestick has its own rules and so does the second candlestick that comes after. I have designed these rules after years of backtesting. These rules allow you to spot what setups are valid or invalid. The two golden rules. So say you spot a large valid candlestick and you're now looking at the second candlestick. Well, the first golden rule is that the second candlestick should completely be above or below the large candlestick. The second golden rule is that the second candlestick should always be smaller than the large candlestick. So if the first large candlestick is five pips, the second candlestick must be smaller than five pips. If the first candlestick is 20 pips, then the second candlestick must be smaller than 20 pips. When you understand these two rules, you will be able to differentiate between valid or invalid candlestick setups. Now let's go ahead and explain these invalid candlesticks. All these candlesticks you see here are invalid. So let's start with the first one. We have a setup here and we have the first large candlestick and the second candlestick. Now what's the problem with this? Well, it's simple. The first rule was the second candlestick must completely open below or above the first large candlestick. Now, if you have a look, the second candlestick has not opened completely below the first large candlestick. It's in fact opened in between the first large candlestick, right? It didn't open below the wick or this tail here. That's why it's invalid. It did not open below. When I talk about completely below or above, I mean completely including the body and the wick, right? If this candlestick opened below, it would have been valid, but it opened in between the body and the wick or the tail. That's why it's invalid. The second candlestick cannot touch the first candlestick. And when I say candlestick, I mean the body and the wick together. This is the body, this is the wick. Together we call them candlestick. Now, number two, we have the first candle, second candle. What's the problem? Well, the second candlestick is touching the first candlestick, right? The wick of the second candlestick is touching the bottom wick of the first candlestick, which is why it's invalid. Golden rule number one, second candlestick must completely open above or below the first large candlestick. There are no exceptions to that rule. So in this example, the wick of the second candlestick is touching or is side by side with the wick of the first large candlestick. So that's why it's invalid. If this candlestick opened below and it was right below the wick of the first large candlestick, then yes, it would be valid, but it's not the case. Now we have number three. We have the large candlestick and the second candlestick. There are two problems with this. It's not opened below, and that's number one. That's the number one problem. Second candlestick has not opened below the first large candlestick. Problem number two, if you were to have the 20% take profit line just here, 
the wick of the second candlestick would have already hit the 20% take profit line. So that's, you know, that's an invalid trade, right? So be careful, make sure the second candlestick is below and the wick is not touching the take profit line. Now, number four, it's very simple. We have the first candlestick and the second candlestick. What is the problem? The second candlestick is breaking golden rule number two, which is the second candlestick must be smaller in size, right? If this was five pips, this would be, second candlestick would be 50 pips or something, right? So make sure the second candlestick is smaller than the first candlestick. But now we have the valid candlesticks. Number one, we have a pretty basic one. First large candlestick and the second candlestick, right? The second candlestick has opened below and is perfect. This is the most perfect setup you can get. So that's why it's valid. Number two, we have the first large candlestick here and second candlestick. The reason why it's valid, the second candlestick opens below the first large candlestick, right? The wick is below the body of the first large candlestick. If this wick was bigger and it was touching the body of the first large candlestick, then it would be an invalid setup. But the wick is lower than the body of the first large candlestick and the second candlestick as a whole, body and wick, is below the first candlestick. That's why it's valid. Number three, we have the first candlestick and the second candlestick. Why is it valid? We have a wick here but the body is not touching the wick. It's lower than the wick, right? The first golden rule is that the second candlestick must completely be above or below the first large candlestick. Now, in this case, it's completely below, right? It's not touching or interfering with anything to do with the first large candlestick, body or wick. The second candlestick is completely below and that's why it's valid. Number four, we have the first candlestick, second candlestick. This one's a bit more complex, but the reason why it's valid is because, right, we have a wick here, another wick here, and they're not touching each other, right? It's still following the rule, right? The second candlestick is smaller in size, and it's completely below the first large candlestick. It doesn't matter what it has, wick or no wick, it needs to completely be below the first large candlestick and the second candlestick cannot touch anything to do with the first large candlestick. So if the body was the same but the wick of the second candlestick was you know slightly higher and it was you know level to level with the first candlestick wick then it would be invalid. We don't the aim here is to make sure the first candlestick and the second candlestick do not interfere. We need it to be its separate candlesticks. We don't want the second candlestick touching or being at the same level as the first candlestick. So yeah, I hope you guys learned, you know, the difference between valid setups and invalid setups. You know, just follow the golden rule and you'll be good. And remember, this takes practice, right? This takes practice and it takes time. Try it on a demo account and, you know, Take it from there. Don't try to learn this in one day because you won't. This was years of experience that I, you know, I'm explaining in a few minutes. So make sure, you know, you practice because practice makes perfect. Valid slash invalid setups. What are valid slash invalid setups? So you know the rules to the 20% strategy and you also know the valid slash invalid candlesticks. Now we'll show you the real setups and explain what's valid or invalid. Let's head over to the charts. Okay, so we're on the charts and we're currently looking at gold on the one minute time frame. Now, this is the first invalid setup. Now, what's wrong? So this is our large candlestick. The first thing that I do, check the size of the candlestick. So I grab the crosshair and I check from the bottom to the top. So it's 8.6 pips. Now I check the second candlestick. And as you can see, the second candlestick is 8.8 .8 pips. The middle number shows 88, but it's eight pips and eight pipettes, right? So it's 8.8 .8 pips. 
Now, just from that, you know the second candlestick is bigger than the first candlestick, which means the golden rule number two is being broken. The second candlestick cannot be bigger than the first candlestick. Also, if you notice, the second candlestick is touching the wick of the first candlestick. Let me zoom in. And as you can see, the second candlestick is touching the first candlestick's wick. Just based on that, the setup is invalid, regardless of if the RSI is below 30 or anything else. The setup is immediately invalid. So this is the first thing you need to do. Check the size of the candlesticks and check the first candlestick and the second candlestick. So yeah, that's why this setup is invalid. Okay, so the second invalid setup is pound JPY. This is our large candlestick. So the first thing that I do is check the size. Let me zoom in. It's 5.1 pips. So that's good. It's, it's a minimum of five pips. Now the second candlestick, is it touching the first candlestick? And let me zoom in. Okay, so it looks like the second candlestick is touching the wick of the first candlestick. I know it's touching it slightly, but to me, when I notice that, I would be wary and I would stay away from the trade because it breaks the rule, which is the second candlestick cannot touch the first candlestick. Now, here's a golden rule. When you notice something like this where it's touching it slightly and you're not sure whether the rules are being broken or not, usually the setup will have an answer for you. So in this case, what I do is I do not enter the trade, but out of curiosity, I would place the take profit. So it would be roughly here and I would just wait, right? I would wait to see if the take profit gets hit, right? So in this case, the take profit is 139.076, which means we would need a minimum of 100 pips per trade. So 139, it would be 138.076. So right here, let's grab the line just there. So let's see if price hits the entry and heads towards the take profit. And what do you notice? Price doesn't hit entry, it hits take profit, which means not only is the second candlestick being touched by the first candlestick, but also price didn't meet our 100 pip minimum entry. So yes, yeah, sometimes when you're confused or you're not sure, just wait out and stay away, right? Which is why I say, if you're in doubt, stay out, right? This is one of those cases where you will be in doubt. You will question, you know, whether the second candlestick is, you know, touching the first candlestick or not. So yeah, I recommend you zoom in. Sometimes you need to zoom in, right? Zoom in and actually see if it's being touched. So yeah, in this case, the large candlestick was here. Price didn't meet our minimum entry, although the RSI was below 30. So invalid trade straight away. So yeah, a lesson from this would be if in doubt, stay out and always stay out from a trade that breaks rules, regardless of how close, whatever it is, if the rules are broken, stay out. Okay, so now we're gonna look at two valid setups. The first one is pound AUD. The second one is gold. So let's have a look at pound AUD. We have a large candlestick right here. First thing we do is check the size. So it's 7.5 pips. So that's good. The next thing I do is check the second candlestick. Is the second candlestick touching the first candlestick? No, it's not. Now you might notice one thing, which is the body of the second candlestick or the third candlestick is below the first candlestick, but the wicks are, you know, in the same level as the first candlestick. That is a valid trade. Let me show you why. So when you have something like this, right? So the body of the second candlestick is below, but you have a wick slightly like that. And let's say our take profit is right there. That would be a valid trade simply because the body is below the first large candlestick and also the wick is not touching the take profit.
profit line or it's not very close so if it was like this then I would say you know what I'm in doubt I would stay out but the fact that it's like this or if it's like this then I would say it's still valid so don't worry about that if you see a setup like this and let's say you take profit is like that and the wick is like this that is still valid now it's up to you to either take this trade or stay away um, but usually I would take it depending on the size of the wick now if we go back if I was to set my take profit line you can see immediately it's nowhere near my take profit line the main rule is that the second candlestick cannot touch the first candlestick however when it's open below and the wick has not touched take profit then it's a valid trade so yeah I will explain more as we go on but in this case the trade is valid now we have minimum of five pips we have the second candlestick opening below the large candlestick right we have the wick not touching the take profit line and we are good to go also the second candlestick is smaller of course than the first candlestick so we're good to go now we need to have other rules you know in place minimum 100 pips so let's see if we get that so 1.76657 let's go down and look for 100 pips so it'll be 1.75657 so let's bring this down 1.75657 so let's see if the rules are met so yeah, as you can see price hit our entry that's our take profit line this is where we close the trade and take our profits this is where we would enter you know minimum 100 pips right now let's see if the RSI rule has been met so as you can see the RSI is showing below 30 which means oversold which is good because that's our rule if we're buying it has to be 30 or below so in this case we're buying and so this RSI meets the rules and one advice for the RSI would be to only check the RSI after the large candlestick has appeared so this is the large candlestick you can only check to see if it's oversold or overbought after the appearance of the large candlestick so you can't look at you know before the large candlestick and be like hey the RSI was below 30 right you can only count the RSI after the large candlestick has appeared so if we make a line right here from there onwards we can count the RSI to see if it's valid or not so as you can see large candlestick then the RSI goes below 30 so that's good right the RSI goes below 30 multiple times that's even better so let's see if this trade hit take profit so you enter right here you're in a little bit of a drawdown how many pips are you losing about 13 pips you're back in the trade and there you go take profit has been hit so that's why this trade is a valid trade next up we have a gold setup this is a gold sell setup and this is the large candlestick right here let's zoom in okay so the first thing we do check the size of the large candlestick 36 pips that's very good the bigger the large candlestick the better next thing we do is to check and see if the second candle has opened above or below the large candlestick so has it opened above yes it has so you can see if I use the crosshair and just put it in the middle the second candlestick has opened above which is good now you can see visually the second candlestick is smaller but let's just check how small 19 pips so it's smaller than the large candlestick so check we have a large candlestick minimum five pips second candlestick has opened above that's good it's smaller that's good now what do we do we plot the 20 percent line which is our take profit line this is where we close the trade and exit there we go and you don't have to be really accurate you just have to say hey this is the middle point and this would be the 20 percent point right that's what you need to do now we need a minimum of 100 pips so currently our take profit is 1844.41 so minimum 100 pips would be 
0.41 so there we go we have our take profit we have our entry now has the rsi gone above 70 in this example let's place our horizontal line and we can only count the rsi after the large candlestick has appeared so yes as you can see the rsi has gone above 70 right in fact it went as high as 85 right so that's good the rsi rule has been met now we need to set our stop loss right because our trade is one to one meaning we're aiming for 100 pips we're risking 100 pips so our entry is 1854.41 our stop loss will be 1864.41 so let's drag this higher and there we go we have our entry our take profit our rules on the first candlestick and second candlestick being followed the rsi being above 70 which is good we're following the one to one risk reward our entry for minimum 100 pips has been met all the rules are being followed and this entry is just an example sometimes you might enter a little higher than 100 pips depending on how you do your analysis so when i'm saying you know minimum 100 pips it doesn't mean every trade we follow um is going to give us 100 pips right it could be 120 130 and usually it might be more than that so let's say in this example 100 pips is the trade now let's see what happens price comes very close to our stop loss and then reverses so that means we're still in the trade let's see if take profit gets hit now we're back on the trade we're in the entry area a little bit of a profit and boom take profit has hit that means we made profits and you know we're out of the trade with you know a hundred pips profit so yeah that's how you analyze and differentiate an invalid setup and a valid setup just to recap the first one second candlestick is touching the first candlestick and the sizes are not the same second candlestick is bigger than the first candlestick second setup which is invalid is pound jpy the second candlestick is touching the wick of the first candlestick and also our minimum 100 pip entry rule is not being followed as you can see take profit hit very early so that's invalid now why is pound aud valid well the first candlestick is bigger than the second candlestick the second candlestick has opened below the first large candlestick and the wick of the second candlestick is not touching the take profit line so that's valid and all the other rules you know are followed in this example minimum 100 pips entry and gold is valid because all the rules are being followed we have the large candlestick second candlestick opening above and this is really a very good example of the best valid setup you can get there's no wicks on both the first candlestick the large candlestick and the second candlestick so this is the less headache version of finding setups that you know have wicks when wicks are involved usually it's a longer process of identifying what's valid or what's not valid but again it takes time it takes practice so when you're overwhelmed by these rules just practice trust me the more you practice the more you'll you know get the hang of it how to have better entries with the 20 percent strategy why does the entry of a trade matter it's impossible to have a trade with zero drawdown there will always be drawdowns however if you can work on getting better entries then you will make more per trade let's say you enter a buy trade hoping to make 100 pips and when you enter the trade price goes against you and you're now minus 30 pips and now let's say another trader saw that same buy setup but was waiting for a better entry and now after price has gone down minus 30 pips he enters the buy trade the second trader could now profit 30 pips more than you and also now has his stop loss set 30 pips below the first trader the second trader has a lower probability of getting their stop loss hit compared to the first trader having good entries matter how can you get better entries with a 20 percent strategy there is one thing you can use alongside the 20 percent strategy to help you get better entries support and resistance 
Let me explain. How support and resistance gives you better entries. Support and resistance zones are levels where price struggles to break above or below. When you combine the 20% strategy with support and resistance, you target zones where price has a higher chance of reversing from, which increases the probability of having a winning trade. How to use support and resistance with the 20% strategy. When you find a valid 20% setup, then you either enter the trade after the rules are met, meaning, you know, after the 100 pip minimum rule, or you can use support and resistance to find a better entry. Both are fine. Not every trade will give you the opportunity to use support and resistance because sometimes there are no support and resistance zones near the preferred entry. So yeah, if you don't happen to find a very good support or resistance level near your, you know, setup, then that's okay. Don't worry about it. You can still enter the trade. Step number one, have a valid setup. Before you think of using support and resistance with the 20% strategy, you need to have a valid 20% setup that follows the rules. Only when you have a setup can you possibly apply support and resistance. So make sure all the rules are followed. Minimum 100 pips, first candlestick is minimum 5 pips, second candlestick is below or above, right? Second candlestick is also smaller. Make sure you're following the rules. Step number two, set up your support and resistance zones. You need to have your support and resistance zones ready at all times so that when you have a valid setup, you can decide if there is a support and resistance zone you can use. What time frames can you use for support and resistance? Well, you can use the one hour, four hour and daily. Although the 20% strategy is first analyzed on the one minute time frame, you can use the one hour, four hour and daily time frame to get better entries using support and resistance. So yeah, don't go below the one hour. Between the one hour and the daily time frame is where you need to set your support and resistance zones. Step number three, enter using the support and resistance zone. It's really that simple. When price is in the support and resistance zone, you need to first wait to see how it reacts. Is it slowing down? Is it, you know, increasing in volume what exactly is happening and if it seems to be slowing down it's best to place the trade and you have increased the probability of having a winning trade by setting your entry on a support and resistance zone remember trading is a probability game now let me show you how to apply this on the charts so we're currently on pound AUD, we find a valid setup the rules are being followed so now we're looking to see if our minimum 100 pips entry is good enough, right? Sometimes you'll have your minimum 100 pip entry just on that support or resistance line. So that matches or sometimes, you know, you'll have your entry, which is minimum 100 pips, but the support is maybe 30 pips below that. So you'll have a 130 pip trade rather than a 100 pip trade. So let's see what happens. Let's identify our take profit. So that's our take profit. Now, just to make sure it's easier to identify on the one hour time frame, I will mark the candlestick, the large candlestick, and I will also mark the entry. So let me zoom out. There we go. So let's go on the one hour. So yeah, we're currently on the one hour time frame. I have marked the candlestick and the entry. This is the large candlestick where the one minute time frame is. Price comes down. Now this is our minimum 100 pip entry. I usually set the minimum 100 pip entry and I zoom out and I go on the one hour time frame to see if it's a good level. Now, in this case, if I move this out of the way, you can see price goes down, touches that support level, a little bit of a drawdown, 10, 13 pips, right? And then it goes back up and hits take profit. So that's what I mean by having a support level as an entry. Now, in this example, the support level was you know, the same level as our entry. So that's, you know, that's very lucky if you ask me, um, but that's really good. Let's let's see if we can go on the four hour time frame to see if we have a level of support there as well. And yeah, as you can see, the large candlestick price comes down, hits this four hour support as well. Very good support, which was a resistance level. So it was resistance 
turn support so yeah if you can use a support level always use a support level because it's always better to have a higher probability of a winning trade lastly i'll check gold so we have a setup here this is our large candlestick so let's mark this and this would be our entry okay so all you have to do once you identify your candlestick and your minimum 100 pip entry go on the four hour or one hour time frame so let's go on the four hour time frame and yeah if you have a look the bottom blue is our take profit that's where the large candlestick is the top blue is our minimum 100 pip entry when i set my entry i check to see if it's a good level and as you can see it was a support level it was a previous resistance level and in this example would i have entered here yes because of these support levels right and a previous resistance level rejection so yeah that's a good level if we go to the one hour we can see it was previous support now struggling to break above so yeah although price came close to the stop loss again you ended up winning so that was a good trade and also you know one tip is that you know don't worry about having that perfect support or resistance level because there will always be another support level or resistance level for example there, there could have been another resistance level here slightly higher i could have entered here so if i said to myself i could enter right here i would have missed out because price would not have gone to that level so sometimes you know just understand the best area or just pick a zone or a, or a level that you think is best and then enter the trade important things to know about the 20 percent strategy there are a few things you need to know about my strategy that will help you understand more about it number one i only trade the pound pairs and gold when i first started trading using the 20 percent strategy i used to trade all the pairs but i found that i had more setups coming from the pound pairs and gold I have been trading pound pairs and gold for a long time now and I'm loving it. Setups also appear more often on these pairs. If you're looking to trade other pairs, I would suggest demo trading and testing to see if it's for you, but I would highly recommend pound pairs and gold. Remember, you don't need to trade all the different pairs to make money. Stick to a few pairs and master it. Number two, do not use trading view. I have never used the TradingView platform to look for 20% setups because TradingView shows the wrong candlesticks on the one minute time frame. So please do not use TradingView, otherwise the candlesticks will look different compared to MetaTrader 4. I will do more research into this and see if there's a solution, but for now stay away from it and use MetaTrader 4. So just download MetaTrader for the software which your broker should give you and you'll be good to go. Number three, use a low spread broker. I personally use IC Markets as my broker and would highly recommend it because it shows you the correct candlesticks on the one minute time frame and is important when trading the 20% strategy. If you're not able to join IC Markets, then look for a low spread broker and do some testing. Don't be in such a rush to place trades as this is your future and you want to start the right way. I will do some more testing as to which brokers are fine, but please use low spread brokers. Number four, patience is required. Never be desperate to place trades. If you are desperate, you need to cut that behavior. With the 20% strategy, you will need to have patience because it's a high win rate strategy that appears a few times a month. Now, I can't put a number on how many times per week setups form, but if I was to give it a guess, I would say one to three setups a week between all the pound pairs and gold. Now, that could be more or less, but the point is that you need to have patience. So yeah, just to add a bit more context, when people learn new strategies, they expect to always find setups and always be in trades and always be profiting or whatever you don't need to trade all the time you don't need to trade all the time so let's do some basic math let's say you take three trades in a week now each trade you take is 100 pips 
Now, 100 pips times three trades, that's 300 pips. So let's say you lose one trade, so that leaves you with 200 pips. Now, 200 pips divided by five days of the trading week equals 40 pips. That means you are technically making 40 pips a day. So don't focus on trading every day, but taking the best trades. If you happen to not trade the first three days of the week, and then during the last two days of the week, you place three trades, you still made money. If there are no trade setups during the week, then that is also fine. Let's say you only find setups for two weeks of the month. And in those two weeks, you take six trades. Out of six trades, let's say you win four and lose two. Assuming all those trades are 100 pip trades, that leaves you with 400 pips profit. 400 pips divided by the whole month, that means you are making roughly 13 pips a day. That's still something. I say that to say don't focus on the now, focus on finding clear setups and working on your skill and the money will follow. I do know some people will fail with using the strategy due to not having patience and I also know some people will have massive success. Two things that destroy a trader, greed and impatience. I wish you all nothing but success.